All right. First leg of the place accumulator, Mike. Anthony climbs aboard El Shadia. Um, looks like there's lots of improvement to come. Yeah, disappointing last time, but uh, she wasn't wasn't striding out. She's not the soundest individual. Um, we gave her a bit of a break, freshened her up. Uh, but working well for Saturday. Um, how good she is, I don't know. I think she's going to win one or two, but uh, you know, if there's anything really hot in there, she'd you know she'd she'd have difficulty. But um, she's capable of winning a maiden, definitely. So stick your neck out, place accumulator banker. Mm, if I were punters, I'd I'd put one or two with her. Okay, first class. Onto the first leg of the pick six. We've got uh, Wild Dancer. Consistent sort. Um, she normally runs in the first four. Probably been going a little far at nine furlongs with a better over a mile. Uh, she's a four-year-old. She's very fit. Um, she must have a good each way chance. Then the first leg of the jackpot, you've got a lovely strong coupling with Mayart and Santa Carolina. Yeah, I thought Santa Carolina ran well last time with the Colts. Um, she was handy when she's a filly that actually likes to come from off the pace. Um, but having said that, at level weights with uh, Athena, you know, horses like that, she's going to struggle. Well, it's going to be it's going to be difficult. Um, I think she'd probably be better over a mile. I know she's just one over fourteen hundred. Uh, but a filly that's in in pretty good form, quite fit at the moment. Very strong race for a pinnacle with a Phillies Guineas winner and a Group One winner in it. Yeah, well, it, it it's in the right place. You know, you got the, you got the build up to the Epitombi uh, Stakes in three weeks' time, so it's in the right place. It's uh, you know it's well well placed. First class. Then on to the six, we've got a Dream Upon a Dream, which would appear to be stable elect with Anthony Board King, Mambo's Legacy, and then of course uh, Kosovo with Lava Flow to go back up. Yeah, he's, uh, he's probably got more speed than the other three. Uh, he went very well in blinkers last time, settled in off the pace and accelerated very, very well. It was impressive. He has been over 1,400 without blinkers. Didn't seem to stay, but I think he's in a better vein of form now than he was then. Um, so, uh, you know, speed-wise, he's, very, he's, he's probably speed-wise more suited to the distance than any of the others. King Mambo's legacy, I think, is a classic horse. Um, but one of those that, you know, is going to be firing on at, on at the end, as will Lava Flow, I think. Uh, Kosovo won very well first time out. Um, drawn badly, but quite a, quite a nice little filly with a scopy pedigree as well. So she's one that should also be doing the best work at the end. Well, whatever one thinks about the ready to run, it's a, it's a massive amount of money. 1.7 million rand to the winner. It's, it's astronomical money. Look, I know. I mean, if you think of it, that it's uh, it's worth more than the July. It's it's almost ridiculous, you know. But the concept there, it's for for buyers, it's a great concept. And uh, you know, I mean, why shouldn't one take uh, take uh, advantage of it? Um, I think you only got 120 horses or 150 horses eligible, uh, eligible for these races, of which um, you know, the probably only about 80 or 90, realistically, that, that, that would have a chance. You know, others have got more scopy pedigree. And in fact, that's the problem I have with, with, with these sales races, is the distance. I think 14 is a horrible distance. Uh, and rather divide the money over a mile and over six furlongs, because then you're giving sprinters a chance and you're giving the classic pedigrees a chance over a mile as well for 1.8 million each. You know, why not? Rather than all your eggs in one basket, you know, over, over, over seven furlongs, which... Yeah. You know, as I said to you, it's a specialist distance, but it's, uh, I think it's the worst distance, really, in racing. So it's almost like you're proposing a, a, a sort of a, a mini triple crown for the ready-to-run candidates. Well, I wouldn't say a triple crown. Just have one over six furlongs and one over a mile. Yeah. Uh, I, I see both sales companies have gone for seven furlongs. Yeah. The draw bias in seven furlongs is massive. Yeah. Uh, whereas down the straight, you could run 16, and around the turn, you could run 16. So you're giving 32 horses a chance. Uh, if there's 150 in a sale, I think you're stacking the odds even more in the buyer's favour of getting a run, you know. So I see even in Cape Town they've gone for seven furlongs. And in fact, for the book one CTS, they've gone for six furlongs. Now, you, now, you, now you're knocking your classic horses right out of the water. So, you know, listen, but you know, who am I to argue? Uh, or who am I to, uh, to say what they should be doing? You know, there's uh, clever men there, I believe. I think it'd be a little bit of food for thought there. <laughs> Michael, on to the eighth race, which sees uh, Anthony jump aboard Marge Mu. Uh, we all know the saga. One fine day, top class form. Two of the best riders in the land with two of the finest fillies in the land. Two good fillies. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, I think one fine day is at a limit probably at six furlongs. I mean seven furlongs. Uh, she ran very well at Grable. 
with the Colts. And one very well last time in a very qu in a in a quick time too. So she's a smart filly and she's getting eight pounds from Majmu. Majmu for me, this is almost minimum now. She's a filly that's definitely wanting to go a mile to ten furlongs. But obviously very smart, quickens very well. But a smart field, I think. There's a few fillies there that have won, you know, were unbeaten as well. So who who knows what they are? They could be anything. So um, you know, one's got to respect those fillies and especially horses that win and win as well as some of those I see that have won maidens, won well, and won maidens very well. Um, you, you, uh, you've got to have healthy respect for them. Well, it looks like the uh, Aventure Philly Skinnies is shaping up to be some sort of, sort of a race because there's lots of people talking about the Phillies in Cape Town. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, that's great for, for, for Aventure to, to have that sort of talk. And uh, it's always hard for us riding down. It's never easy. Um, but we've done it with, with success and it's a fantastic race day. So. You know, the more competitive fillies there are, the greater it is for a spectacle it is for, for racing, really. Excellent. Right on to the final leg of the pick six. Uh, we, we've got uh, J. Ed, who takes on uh, Paul Lafferty's champion two-year-old cult. It looks like you've got enormous scope for improvement on what we've seen so far. He has Andrew, and he'll be better suited to Turfentine. He wasn't suited to Gravel at all, if you look where he came from in that last run. Uh, he wants a lot further. He really wants to go nine and ten furlongs a mile plus. Uh, he's not a s quick starter in races. He's gonna, he jumps out at home, okay, but uh, so that's you know a factor, um, and you know possibly maybe just lacks a bit of experience still. Um, but at the weights, he must be a runner, uh, provided he, he doesn't get too too far back, you know. Off the top of your head, even though you you haven't got a runner in the race, you'll look at the uh, Charity Mile objectively as the great spectacle that it is. Yeah, I'll always like horses that, that win their preps or run very, very well in their preps. And um, uh, Robbie Sage has also done that. I mean, I think he's, he's on a four or five roll. Yeah. That's always good. And he, every time he gets a penalty, he rises. A, so I think that's uh, important. Uh, no, no worries at a very good prep run. It's a length in front. Midnight Runners game along the rail in second. Then comes Heart of a Lion, but no worries. Gallops on the lead. Midnight Run with one late lunge, but no worries did it. No worries beat Midnight Run. Then came Snowden and Heart of a Lion. And as I said, Bushley Top, I think, is. I like the way he ran on last time uh, in, in, his, in his prep. Uh, Jeff's got a strong coupling. I suppose you can't leave them out, but a lot of them. You know, maybe just be, yeah, they might just be looking to prep for the uh, for the Summer Cup and I wouldn't be mad about getting penalties, I guess. Yeah, I think it is a race that has thrown out its fair share of results. I mean, there's been some massive outsiders by virtue of the fact that it is a handicap and that it is at the time of the year where horses are preparing for the Sansui Summer Cup. Yeah, I think that's the key, is that a lot of them are prepping so they, they, they wouldn't be 101% fit. Um, I've won it before with horses that are, Lesser, lesser individuals, but just really fit for that race, you know. So I think that's something to take note of.